<laughs> Pretty much everything you need to know about taming and using a Rani Ognatha in Ark Survival Evolved. Rani Ognathas can only be located within the swamp biomes of the Island and Lost Island DLC map. Their large size and fluttery wings makes them incredibly easy to spot at a distance, but their spawn rates are extremely low, so finding them can be somewhat of a challenge. Using an S Plus Tech Transmitter, I was able to scan and locate all of the available spawns on the island, but the scanner didn't work on the Lost Island for some reason. If you're still having trouble locating them, then simply open up your mouth slightly or pull out a piece of fresh fruit to bag yourself a HELICOPTER BUG! Holy shit, could you imagine if this thing smacked your windshield? So, how do you go about taming one of these massive cicadas, you might ask? Well, just like with any of the recent creature additions to Ark, the taming process is extremely convoluted and overly complicated for no apparent reason, so buckle up as I try my best to explain this. Wild Raniognathas cannot be tamed, but instead must be used to impregnate one of your tribe's tamed creatures. The level and drag weight of the creature you choose to get impregnated has a direct impact on the level of the larva that will be birthed, so using a high-level creature with a drag weight of greater than 900 is recommended for the best results. Giganotosaurus and Carcabodontosaurus seem to be the top-tier dinos to use, but just be aware that the creature that you choose to use will die at the end of the process, so don't use something you're too attached to. On top of having your chosen sacrificial tame, you're also going to need a magnifying glass, a high-damage ranged weapon such as a pump shotgun or compound bow, and a low-damage ranged weapon such as a simple pistol or an assault rifle. You're also going to need some of the items from this list for the imprinting process, because Wildcard likes to make your life f***ing miserable, so best to gather all this stuff ahead of time. Female Raniognathas are the only ones that can impregnate a creature, however they will only do this after you've used a Raniognatha pheromone on your tame, which is only dropped by the male Raniognathas after you've killed them. Using a net gun to immobilize it or getting it to aggro a nearby structure makes the process of killing it much easier. You'll need to gather this pheromone before you start the actual taming process, but not too soon because it does have an expiration timer attached to it. This timer can be greatly lengthened by placing it inside of a refrigerator or a tamed Fenrir, so you might want to take advantage of this if you're gathering materials ahead of time. After you've acquired the Rani Ognatha pheromone and located a female you want to impregnate your tame, you're ready to begin the taming process. It's best practice to use the Rani Ognatha pheromone on your chosen tame at the very start of the taming process, as the effect lasts for 5 minutes anyways and it ensures that the female will automatically impregnate your tame when the time is right. For the female to impregnate your creature, you'll need to DPS it down to below 10% health, similar to the process of taming a reaper. Now if you're riding on the back of something like a trike, this process is super easy, because you can use your ranged weapons and magnifying glass while mounted. But if you're using something like a Giga or a Karkaro, then you need to slowly damage it down using the dino, or throw in some range shots between mounting and unmounting. In this example, I simply used my judgment and paid attention to the model of the Rani Ognatha to determine when it was getting low on health. Once the female falls under the 10% health threshold, it will swoop in, impregnate your creature with its massive alien bug tail, and quickly fly away to avoid the child support payments. Alternatively, you could just use the net gun on the female, damage it down to below 10% health, then mount your creature and use the male pheromone before it escapes. Doing this seemed to work just fine in my testing, and was an extremely easy way to get pregnant. Fair warning, do not cryopod your creature after it's impregnated, because this will kill the larva inside and ruin the entire taming process. Either walk back to base the long way, or use a hover skiff, tech teleporter, or previously tamed Rani Ognatha to move your impregnated creature. Alright, so the good news is, the hard part is over. The bad news is, now you need to imprint the baby while it's gestating to achieve the best larva possible. This is where that completely random go f yourself list of items comes into play. When you hover over your impregnated creature, you'll see a gestation timer and a food cravings timer ticking down. When the food cravings timer reaches zero, your creature will request a random item from that list in order to satisfy the craving and boost the level of the larva. Simply place that item on the last slot of your hotbar, and use the item on your tamed creature to satisfy the craving. A total of five cravings need to be satisfied to guarantee the highest level possible. The host's health and food will drain at a constant rate while impregnated, but this rate is percentage-based and in line with how far along the gestation of the larva is. I tested to see if a snow owl could be used to heal your tame between food cravings, but as you can see in this example, the impregnated creature's health seems to plummet at an extremely fast rate once the healing is complete, so I don't think this really works all that well. Once you've satisfied five food cravings, the larva will be fully leveled, but you'll still have to wait until the end of the incubation timer before it's born. Once the timer reaches zero, your tamed creature will violently explode in a spray of fluids. You'll need to walk up and claim the baby larva like any other creature. A Maywing can be used to pick it up and carry it around while it's growing, but you'll still have to imprint it like any other baby. The baby larva will eat berries or raw meat as a food source moving forwards. 
The level of the Raniognatha larva is determined by a few different factors. The drag weight and level of the surrogate host, the level of the female Raniognatha that impregnated the surrogate, and the amount of crating satisfied during gestation. If you've done everything correctly, you could expect to have a high-level larva with one of its stats coming from the wild female Raniognatha and the rest coming from the surrogate parent. Raniognatha babies can also inherit mutation stats and colors from the surrogate parent, meaning it's very possible to achieve a baby with ridiculous stats right out the gate without doing any extensive amounts of breeding like with other creatures. Raniognathas cannot be bred, but they can be cloned with a stupid amount of time and element shards. The Raniognatha saddle can be unlocked at level 90 using 65 engram points and can be crafted with the following resources. Alright, so let's dive into the controls and functionality of the Raniognatha and showcase some of what it can do. Conveniently, all of the creature's controls are displayed at the bottom left-hand side of your screen, but it doesn't dive into the full capabilities that we'll discuss in a minute. It features a left mouse button melee attack that does mild damage, a right mouse button fire resin ability which can be toggled with the control key plus right mouse button, the ability to fly or land by pressing the space bar, a shift key sprint ability, the ability to ascend with the X key and descend with the C key, a control key plus C resin armor ability, a C key taunt ability, and an ability to pick up and carry other creatures or structures with the middle mouse button or control key plus left mouse button. Many of the Raniognatha's abilities are based around a unique material called resin, which can be produced passively by placing sap inside of its inventory in a 1 to 1 exchange rate every 5 seconds. It acts as both fuel for the resin armor ability and as ammunition for its various attacks, which is displayed at the bottom left hand side of your screen next to your selected sap ability. Two of the Raniognatha's sap attacks will apply a slowing debuff to the target enemy. The more sap that is applied, the slower the enemy will become until eventually the sap bar fills and immobilizes the target altogether. As far as I can tell, this works on pretty much every tameable creature in the game, including Brontos, Rexes, Gigas, and Carcabodontosaurus. Now, the dossier alludes to the Raniognatha being able to acquire an enzyme from Arthoplores, which buffs their sap abilities to make them tech disruptive, but for the life of me, I can't figure out how to acquire it. I killed hundreds, and I mean hundreds, of Arthoplores using many different methods and different tools each time, but I have no luck harvesting any of these enzymes, so either the drop rate is extremely rare, I'm doing something wrong, or they just straight up forgot to implement this. One of the channel's Discord members suggested that he thought they made the sap-based abilities automatically disrupt tech now instead of needing the Arthoplores enzyme. However, with all the testing that I did, this didn't seem to be the case either. Let me know in the comments if you guys have figured it out, because it has me stumped. The sap bomb ability is extremely useful for large crowd control and applies the largest amount of resin debuff. The needle ability is a rapid-fire resin assault rifle that caps at 75 damage per shot, but doesn't apply any of the slowing resin debuff unless they've already been affected by one of the other two abilities. The Rocket ability is a slower, larger needle shot with a high damage output and applies a moderate amount of resin debuff. The missile can be self-guided by holding down the right mouse button and releasing it when the reticle turns green around the target. Resin Armor is an active ability that bolsters Raniognatha's defenses, similar to the Frost Armor ability of the Fenrir. Based off of the auto turret's damage, it would seem that the damage reduction is somewhere around the 45% mark. The Raniognatha's War ability can be used to scare away most creatures in the game, including the Yitoranus. The Raniognatha is capable of picking up and carrying every creature that a Quetzal can, in addition to a few of the heavier ones, including Reapers, Paraceratherium, Spinos, Yuturanus, and Rexes. It's unable to pick up aquatic creatures, flyers, alphas, bosses, titans, event creatures, or extremely large creatures like Brontos, Titanosaurs, Rock Elementals, Gigas, or Karkaros. The Raniognatha can also be used to move large structures such as vaults without compromising what's actually inside of them. The Raniognatha's omnidirectional flight is one of the smoothest in the game, allowing you to helicopter your way around the sky with precise movements. It also makes for a pretty solid underwater mount, although its resin abilities don't work here. It can even stick to various surfaces like a rock drake, allowing you to position it out of the way inside of your base, or hide on surfaces in PvP situations. I'm invisible! Alright, so with all the controls and functionality in mind, what is the Raniognatha's main use? Aside from kindling my nightmares of an oversized insect filling me with his baby batter and forcibly making a surrogate parent against my will until I carry the larva through a gestation and ultimately burst apart like a Taco Bell toilet on a Tuesday! Jesus Christ! Well, the Raniognatha borrows a lot of components from other creatures on the Ark, making it rather versatile and sought after. Its omnidirectional movement and ability to pick up and carry large creatures and structures makes it an extremely useful tame in PvE, while its combat mechanics and sap-based abilities make it extremely useful in PvP. If a PvE mount is what you're looking for, you want to invest mainly into health and stamina, with optional point investment into weight. As aforementioned, the Raniognatha features the highest drag weight carry in the game, making it an incredibly useful tame for reorganizing your base and keeping that line of breeding rexes, well, in line. Its omnidirectional movement and fast flying speed make it the obvious choice for map exploration and creature taming, especially over the much outdated Quetzal. 
I'm sorry, buddy, it's not your fault, but a TLC pass just isn't coming anytime soon. You still got a sweet hairdo, though. If a PvP mount is what you're looking for, you'll once again want to invest mainly into health and stamina, with optional point investment into weight. The Rani Ognatha's sap-oriented combat mechanics make it an extremely sought-after creature in the late game. Its ability to blanket AoE sections of the ground with movement slowing sap and consistent range DPS make it a must-have on the open battlefield, not to mention the ability to swoop in and pick up large dinos to dispatch of them. That about wraps up this video, thank you so much for watching! If you enjoyed, then please be sure to leave it a like down below, subscribe to the channel with notifications on to stay up to date on all of my latest content, join the Discord for a community of like-minded wooden creatures, and please keep it me comments because they've won my little Bonaheart. heart. A special thank you goes out to all the buttons to support me on Patreon, you guys are amazing! Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.